So I'm not gonna lie to you. I was trying to take this exam first because I thought it was the easiest CCMP. And boy, was I wrong. So your boy finally passed the Cisco CCMP design 300-420 exam. And I'm officially CCMP certified. And in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and explain to you what I use for my studying, uh, what some of my pitfalls were, and what my overall experience was so that you guys can go ahead and pass this thing too. Let's go ahead and get into it. So I wanna go ahead and start this video off by thanking God, because if you saw my last video on this exam, you know dang well that I needed all this distance I can get. So I wanna thank him for blessing me with passing this exam finally, because I've been stressing. But anyway, so on Saturday, after failing two times before, I actually passed the Cisco CCMP 300-420 exam. So let's go ahead and actually get into the study materials. So I took about six to eight weeks of studying, and my three primary resources were the OCG by Steve Jordan and Anthony Bruno, um, a second edition, of course, along with the Designing Cisco uh, Enterprise Networks course on CBT Nuggets by Jeff Kish, uh, Keith Barker, and a few others. And then also the Cisco Technical Design White Papers, uh, which came in clutch. Um, that was another resource I used. Those are my three primary methods. And I'm going to go ahead and dive into each one of them and what I think about them. All right, so we're starting with this brick over here. The OCG second edition by Anthony Bruno and Steve Jordan. I can't lie, I fell asleep reading this thing so many times. This thing is about 400 pages, uh, maybe a little bit less than that if you take out the quizzes and all that. Very good study material. I like how it's written. A few minor grammatical errors like and stuff like that, but overall pretty spot on and it covered all the exam objectives. However, something I stated in my previous video, it didn't go as in depth as I was hoping it and needed it to after taking the exam. I had said that previously, but that was also because I hadn't gotten through the book when I took the exam the first time. But after actually getting through it and attempting the exam again and then failing again, I definitely realized that it didn't go as in depth as I needed it to. It's a great overall study resource. If you just want to get through everything, you're a good reader and you primarily use reading, I would definitely recommend it. However, reading is not my favorite. I actually like looking at a video series, which is actually what I use next, which was CBT Nuggets. And I'll go ahead and get into that as well. And now that I actually passed the exam i want to actually give away the ocg second edition to somebody uh, so go ahead and drop a comment down below and like this video and i'm gonna be picking one random guy or gal who's studying for this so that i can send it to him for free uh, i appreciate you guys support plus i'm ready to get this damn thing out of my house i've been staring at it for so long i want to get it out of my sight if i can so i want to start off by saying cbt nuggets has always been my primary go-to uh, just about every single exam I've ever done, I usually start with CBT Nuggets and it's just because it's a little bit easier for me to grasp. As I'm watching the videos, I generally take notes. From there, I'll actually go ahead and read the book and take some more notes and then from there, generally that's enough. I haven't had to do much more in any of my exams except for this one where I actually had to get into the Cisco white papers. But CBT Nuggets overall, it was great. It also covered all the exam objectives and it is like the book as well. It doesn't go as in depth as it needs to and that's understandable, it's a video series. They They'd be there for you know days trying to get as in depth as they actually needed to to cover your base but if you're a great video learner and that's what you primarily like to use as an overall just high level uh, introduction to the course material i would definitely recommend the cbt nuggets uh, the only thing that sucks about it is it's about 70 dollars a month or something crazy a year and it can be very expensive if you have budget issues i wouldn't recommend it i would actually just go with the book and then cover down and supplement with the white papers um, but the CBC Nuggets was good and I did get to go through that before I took my exam the first time, second time, and third time. But the difference between the first one versus the second and third was the fact that I actually took notes and I actually slowed the speed down. Generally, I would watch it at like 1.6 times speed, but generally take notes and I didn't do that my first time. The second time around I did and ended up scoring a lot better my second time around because of it, but I still failed. So just overall the books and the CBT nuggets wasn't enough by itself. Definitely gonna wanna go ahead and use the white papers, which is my third study source that I'm gonna cover. So the Cisco white papers, which you can easily find, they're all published uh, on Cisco support. Uh, dot com or something like that. I'll leave the link down below. Uh, but just about every single exam objective that they have on any of their tests, they actually do have some sort of design for the technology. So if you're looking at, you know, MSDP for multicast or SD access, they've got some sort of technical design guide, which is actually very in depth. Generally, they're around 10 pages. Uh, sometimes they're a little bit more or less, depending on what it is. Uh, if it's if it's something specific like MSDP, it's only going to be a few pages and 
I'd say maybe like five to eight, but some of those are actually gonna be like the commands. So you don't even really count those um, cause you're not really worried about configuring it at this point. Uh, but SD access, that can be a little bit longer. That can be like up to 20, 30 pages or something. Uh, but they are very great, very in depth. And generally a lot of them will have bullet points and stuff that's underlined or bolded, which is what they expect to be like key uh, things that you're gonna wanna know and uh, definitely will help you prepare for the exam. So definitely if you if you feel like you're not as in depth in a specific area, I would go to the white paper for that. I know it sucks, uh, I didn't wanna do it, but after the first and second time of failing, I realized that I needed a little bit more in depth knowledge. So I went ahead and actually looked at the white papers and they are very helpful. I would highly recommend it. If you can only do two resources, whether it be the video series or the book, then I would supplement with the white paper and I feel like you're gonna be good. Honestly, even if you use the white paper just by itself, white papers for each subject, you might be fine off of that if you, if you had to ask me. But I generally would always use two resources just because some people uh, learn better based off of the OCG book or the CBT Nuggets. Uh, so highly recommend that. And as you are reading through each of these white papers, books, and the video series, I highly recommend you take notes. That's one thing that has always got me. I generally always take notes, but this exam, I decided to try and cram it and not take any notes and ended up biting me in the butt for it. But those are my study resources. Now I'm gonna go ahead and actually get into my pitfalls and what I recommend you avoiding so that you can pass this thing the first time and don't end up doing what I had to do. Quick note, if you guys are looking to get into IT, you like home labbing, talking about certifications and all that good stuff, make sure you drop a sub down below. When I hit 500 subscribers, I'm gonna be giving away a Raspberry very pi five all right back to the video uh so my first pitfall and the reason i believe i failed the exam the first two times was the fact that i tried doing it on a time crunch i only gave myself about six to eight weeks to study i had taken the cisco encore exam last year and i told myself that i would take it within a year and I actually requested the army to uh, pay for it through the credentialing assistance program since I am an army reservist and told them that I would have it complete within a year. So my year mark was coming up and I needed to take the exam. Otherwise I was gonna have to pay that money back that they paid for the voucher. So I was trying to cram and cram and I didn't give myself appropriate time to study. And uh, I'm pretty sure that's what led to me failing. So I would definitely recommend if you're not on a time crunch, just go ahead and take an additional time to do it. That being said, you're also going to want to go ahead and make sure you're actually writing notes, at least for me. So every time I study, I always write notes and it's generally just so that I can refer back to them, uh, you know, a day or two later, once you've already watched another 20 videos or read another 20 pages, you kind of start to forget some of the other stuff that you previously read. So I always write notes and I did not do it at all this time around. So I would read a chapter and maybe two days later, I'd be on, you know, four or five chapters later of the OCG and I wouldn't even remember what the first chapter was. So I definitely recommend writing notes because what I started doing uh, around my second to third attempt was actually anytime I would learn something, I'd write notes on it. And then before I started my studying for the day, I would actually go through those notes. And then anything else, of course, that I learned throughout the day, I'd add it to the notes. And at the end of the day, I'd go back through everything one more time just to keep all that information you know, fresh in my mind. So that's definitely one reason I would recommend you have notes. So the third pitfall I had uh, kind of ties into not taking notes and time crunch, and it's just, I was mentally exhausted. So I basically quit working out. I usually work out Monday through Friday. I quit doing that. I quit going to jujitsu uh, and just about everything else. I would work from seven to four, and then from four to 12, I was studying every single day, reviewing the notes. Well, at first I wasn't doing any notes. I was reviewing videos, books, and it just was not, um, it was just not manageable. And I was to the point where I think I was just kind of going through the motion. I wasn't actually retaining anything. So, you know, mentally exhausting uh, myself definitely played into uh, me not passing. And not to mention, it got to the point where I would completely forget to look at the exam objectives. I decided not to look at them prior to my exam and realized after I had taken it and failed it and saw some stuff on there on the test that I was like, man, I don't remember seeing that at all. When I looked at the exam objectives, I realized it was on there and I just completely forgot about that specific subject and didn't really know what it was at all. So definitely make sure you print out those exam objectives and go through each one of them. If you can't tell yourself a benefit and a, you know pros and cons to each of those things when you would use it versus other things, then you're probably not ready for the exam. So make sure you can do that with just about every single thing that's on those exam objectives. But anyways, those were my pitfalls. I was mentally exhausted. I was trying to cram. I didn't write any notes and honestly I didn't even review the exam objectives to make sure I, I knew everything that I thought was going to be on the exam. So make sure you guys avoid those, which is probably common sense. 
I'm stupid, so I, you know, of course, I had to learn the hard way, and I'm hoping you guys don't have to, and you pass your first try. But now let's go ahead and get into my overall thoughts about the exam. So I'm not gonna lie to you, I was trying to take this exam first because I thought it was the easiest CCMP, and boy, was I wrong. Now, had I given myself the appropriate time to actually study and did all my actual general preparation uh, that I do, like writing notes, I probably would have been able to pass maybe first or second try. Why you always lying? But I definitely decided to half it and ended up paying the price for it. Now, the exam definitely had that design mentality. Uh, they're going to ask you or give you situations where you need to pick between several different things that could solve the customer's problem. Uh, but they want the best answer of course you know cisco CompTIA, they always want the best answer uh generally from my experience cisco isn't as bad as CompTIA is with some of those best answer questions and they generally don't try and trick you as much but given the fact that the cisco ccmp design is a lot more ambiguous it, ambiguous it's not just you know what is this how you configure it what are some central troubleshooting like you would probably get with the uh, routing and switching it does make it a little bit harder because it's it is kind of ambiguous however it definitely you know holds true to what its name is design you definitely have to understand and i think it's very beneficial especially if you want to be a consultant uh stuff like that or you're just a network design engineer definitely recommend the uh, cisco and salad exam and i i definitely did enjoy the overall process for it why are you always lying taking the exam with pearson view it was a lot better than my previous video where i ended up waiting about two hours just to do the test make sure you check that out if you want to hear more about that as soon as i got into the queue i was already next in line that holds true for my second attempt and my third attempt i scheduled them both on saturdays around 10 45 to 12 uh, for both of those exams and i was next in queue as soon as i arrived both times so it was a lot better than that first time i don't know what happened that first time and i generally don't have that issue with pearson view questions overall time constraints so you get 90 minutes to take the exam and and both attempts one and three I definitely had more than enough time I think I think I let's say I had like 30 to 40 minutes each time afterwards or something like that and that was me reading the questions over and over now my second attempt I was a lot more stressed and I was just I don't know what was going on but I was down to like a minute left on that last on that second attempt but overall you're, you're gonna have enough time um, definitely go ahead and make sure you read the question over and over. There's going to be some times in there where there's that one word that changes up the answer. So make sure you're double checking and triple checking. You definitely are going to have enough time. But those are my overall thoughts on the exam. I thought it was a great uh, experience overall. Of course, failing twice sucked, but uh, the, the Cisco CCMP design is definitely on point if you ask me. So what's next for me? Well, through my job, I actually got a voucher to take the PC NSA, the Palo Cisco Certified Network Security Associate. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and start studying that a little bit. Uh, since it's not needed and it's nothing very serious, I'm just gonna take my time on it. Uh, I've deployed Apollo Alto VM in my uh, ESXi labbing environment, as well as an F5 as well, cause I'm doing some stuff uh, with that right now. So I'm just gonna take my time practicing with that and. Uh, I think I'll try and go through a video series on CBT Nuggets and then eventually take that. Uh, but other than that, I also need to refresh on my Python. It's been several months since I actually hit it and I want to actually get back into that. I was using Scraply for some automate network automation. By the way, if you guys want to see any videos on basic you know, uh, network automation with Python, let me know. I can maybe create some and it, it can get, I can probably get you up and running uh, creating basic Python scripts in less than 20 minutes. But other than that, uh, just those studying and then just getting back into life. I spent so much time studying. I just want to get back to working out, uh, getting back into jujitsu and uh, honestly doing some more YouTube uh, just so I can kind of get this channel going more and helping out people. Uh, plus, I just like doing the labs and stuff like that and recording. It's pretty fun. Uh, so that's all I really got going. Uh, but that's about it. That was my experience overall with the exam. My thoughts. Uh, if you have any questions, of course, uh, drop them down in the comments down below. Obviously, I'm not going to give away anything that would violate uh, Cisco NDAs, but definitely let me know if you're studying for the exam or what exam you are taking now. What might you want me to cover next? And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. I appreciate your guys' support and take it easy. Peace.